on this episode, A Crisis of Faith. Nobody can read this. Nobody can read this, Christian. What are you even doing? We invent new words again. Let's call this P-logic. P-logic. Which lead to breakthroughs. This is completely changed the nature of the game. Hmm. Hi everybody, I'm Christian and this is Lazy Devs Academy and this is our little shmup tutorial. We are almost, almost at the big boss fight. We are getting ready to create boss fights in our game. But we're not quite there yet because there is some final wrap ups to do and this is going to be what we're going to do today. There is some loose ends that I want to tie up. Let's do the to-do lists run. Uh, we did create new levels, we did do pickups. Um, we have to think about the bomb, we have to think about the scoring, and and then there's gonna be boss. And then we're gonna think about other things. Let's see about that. I want to go back to the pickups again, and uh, if you did the doggy zone challenge that you kind of like already also thought about what the pickups are going to be. Um, first I wanted to um, manipulate the spawn of the pickups. It's something I already teased at. I kind of like wanted to um, the pickups to drop more frequently when the enemy that you hit is the enemy that's doing the attack. Um, and that's not what's happening right now, so maybe we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna tweak this a little bit. Um, so this is a bit of a problem because I, I, I want... You don't want to be like, okay, if, we, if there's gonna be a chance of dropping a, dropping a pickup and then if... Um, and then here, when we're checking if the mission was an attack, attack mission, then we're gonna uh, do the drop check again the R&D check again, because then what's, what, ca what could happen is that an enemy drops two pickups at the same time and it will be overlapping and that will look ugh, awful. So I don't want that. Um, so instead I just want to have just one uh, R&D check and I'm just going to manipulate the chances that the pickup will, will drop. So we're going to do something like local uh, cherry chance or uh, share chance share chance um, and uh, the default is going to be 0 0.1 um, but here when the mission was an attack we're going to set a share chance to 0 0.2 so so um, yeah th there's going to be default chance for for the cherry drop uh, but if again if the, uh, the enemy is currently on a mission and we shoot them down during a mission then the chance will increase. And then here, when we're actually checking the R&D, we're gonna check it against this uh, helper variable um, chair chance, this local variable chair chance. And that will get us only one, uh, one pickup. Ah, I was trying to get him. Uh, this is very important that I think that uh, the, the, the pickups remain on the screen. I think this is this is a very important feature. Uh, and I think they are moving a little bit too... a little bit too slow. Let me put them up to uh, 0 0.75. I think they... because they're, if they're moving so slow, they can you can pick them up so, so easily. Yeah, I think there should be more. This feels better. Oh. Yes. Good. All right. So let us think about what the, will the cherry pickups do. And again, if you play some shmups, and I think you should play some shmups because um, most shmups have pickups. Some shmups have a lot of different types of pickups. Some shmups have only one pickup. Um, and the way shmups em employ pick pickups is crazy and there is no default. There's just very different approaches and there's no something like, okay, this is a default way of doing pickups. There's just no such thing. Every shmup does kind of like their cooks their own thing. Um, so that's kind of nice because it, it means that we have some freedom. There is no like, oh, this is, this is how we should do the pickups. We kind of like it's free for, for us to do what we want. Uh, personally, for example, something I really like is there are some pickups in the Raiden series, for example, where you have a pickup that floats around on the screen that actually doesn't actually go away, but actually stays on the screen. And then depending, it, it changes actually color. And depending which color it is, when you pick it up, it will you will get a different weapon. It will actually change the weapon. That's, I, I think, a, 
a cool mechanic because the pickup becomes something that you actually interact with, that you pay attention to, that actually floats with you all the time. And so it really takes away a lot of attention. That's kind of really nice. Um, but I also like it when you can just collect stuff. It's kind of fun to collect stuff and be like, oh, yes, another one of those, you're right. Um, so Gradius has that, right? Where you collect the pickups and they kind of like, they, you you have, um, they basically money and that you can spend to buy upgrades. And so it's kind of like feels nice. You can just pick up, pick them up and, and, and then be like, okay, now I'm going to spend them, you know? Uh, and I'm, I'm also thinking about what's easy to implement here, obviously. Um, I think uh, something that's that we um, that our game is missing is the ability to um, uh, refill hearts. So that's something that that we want to maybe be doing with the pickups. And also something I, I that is that we were thinking about doing is bombs, right? So how about we combine those two things and our pickups are going to be responsible for getting hearts and bombs. Here is the way I'm thinking of this. Uh, you will collect the pickups. And if you have any pickups in your bank, if you have any cherries collected, then pressing a button, uh, the other button will trigger a bomb. But the bomb will be uh, weaker if you have only very few cherries. And if you have a lot of cherries, the bomb will be really, really strong. And then if you um, reach a certain number, I, I thought like 10, right? Uh, if you reach 10 cherries, then you will get a heart, but your cherries will deplete down to zero. So it's going to be like this. Okay, do I want them to use for a bomb? Uh, which maybe get get me out of the of the difficult situation, or do I want them to uh, to to hold on to my cherries, so I can um, I can get a life back that I had, right? So let's try to do this. So this is going to be the pickup function. Well, we don't have a pickup function, but this is. Uh, let's actually make a new. Again, I'm going to go to behavior. Uh, we're going to call this function. Um, I'm going to call this pickup logic. Pickup logic, pickup gameplay, pickup, let's call it P logic, P logic. All right, so this is going to be um, like kind of like the gameplay stuff of, because I don't want to put, like squeeze even more an update function. It's such a long function, it's, it's so difficult to already find it. We have to always scroll. Um, so let's go to the um, place where we collide with the pickup. And I am going to just go Plogic. Mm, I'm going to actually do Plogic, but I'm going to uh, send the my pick as an argument. So we know which pickup we currently picked up um, because, yeah, I think this is, this is good. Now, what about the special effects? The question is like, uh, do the special effects, like the sound effects and so forth, is, does that do, do belong to Plogic or is that, you know, something else? That's kind of difficult. I kind of want to, as, as I said, I kind of want to maybe keep as little as possible here. So maybe just get everything out except from the, from the pickup. Just delete the pickup and do the Plogic and then otherwise everything is going to be uh, taken care of in this other function. Um, yeah, behavior, logic. Right, so here we're gonna add one to share. Um, the sound effect, let's put the sound effect to the side because maybe we're gonna have different sound effects depending on what happens. Um, we're definitely they're gonna do the small shock wave. Uh, my pick. Um, making sure that we are actually sending my pick. Okay, good. So we, we are receiving the my pick as an argument. We are um, uh, getting one to like we're increasing our share. We're doing a, a small shockwave at the right position. That's good. Um, and then we're gonna do something like okay, if um, share uh, is greater or equals ten, so we've collected ten pickups, uh, then and this is where we should get a life. Get a life. But here's the thing: what if we don't if uh, is it lives or live? I always forget. I always forget. What if we start with four lives and we set it up so that you cannot actually get more than four lives? So what happens if you are actually already at four lives? You cannot actually get more lives. So that's weird. So we're going to go if lives is smaller than four, then, then the situation is very clear. Lives plus equals one. That's good. But else, do, 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 we don't know what happens else. 
um, yeah, we don't know what happens if we if uh, we pick up something. Maybe we're just gonna get more points, but that's something we're gonna discuss when we get to points, <laughs> right? So this is what happens when we are at ten shares. But if that's if we're not at ten shares, then we're just gonna uh, play our default sound effect, I think. And here, where we're actually getting the lives, I wanted to um, play a sound effect that sounds more like getting a life. So let's make one. <laughs> this is going to be another one of those where Christian will modify modify a sound effect until, um, I mean, we have to. Let's, let's make it very quick. And do an arpe oops, uh, do an arpeggio on everything. Arpeggio, everything is sound arpeggio does sound like sound effects, like um, uh, I mean like uh, pickup sound effects. So. It's too fast. It's too, 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 um, too low. Let's try, actually, maybe, what if we just play it really, really slow? Ah, ah, okay, okay, so, okay, so, hmm. So if we play the, arp the problem is that we're playing the arpeggio sounds, I think, too low. A bit faster. Faster. Hmm. Not quite. And trying to fit uh, hit the right pitch. Okay, maybe like this. Ah oh, man, I, I'm not sure. Let, let's try. What if some of we start using the slow arpeggio? Oh, oh, oh. Seems good. Yeah, that's good. So sound effect thirty one. Man, sometimes it just it just it just today I'm not really lucky with the sound effect. Sometimes I just find the sound effect and it's just immediately awesome, but today I'm just like it it, it takes a while today. Uh, let's let's see how that oh we actually don't have enough cherry so we will never find out what it sounds like we have so let's start with three lives and uh, a nine cherries I want to hear that, that new sound effect. actually no let's start with eight cherries so we heard a new sound effect uh, the old sound effect and the new sound effect afterwards Okay, yeah, that, that was good. That was sounded good, but I don't like now the old sound effect. 
I feel like what if we use the old sound effect and we we use the same thing where we play it slower? See, the arpeggio works better if it's if it's slower. So just like short. Yeah, that's good. Let's try that. You always have to hear the sound effects in, in use, so because otherwise it's whoops. Give me, give me a cherry, you. Maybe we should increase the, the drop rate. What is, what is happening? No cherries in the entire level. Well, that's the nature of. Well, now we have two. Oh, great. All oh, right, I forgot something. So if we get the life, we also want to obviously to um, uh, remove all the cherries. So we're gonna go share equals zero. Um, same when we have the lives, I guess. Yeah, that's good. Okay, maybe the two sounds are a bit too close. We're gonna maybe tweak them a little bit, but so far I'm happy with this. Right, so what happens when we... Well, the point... I'm just gonna get some points. Um, we have a score, right? Um, yeah, we have score. We're just gonna get some score. There's a bit of a problem the sound effects, because the sound effects are so... Um, yeah, so let's get 10 points or whatever. I mean, we're gonna figure out the exact points um, uh, later. Um, there's a bit of a problem that, uh, and that is that because, you know, just the sound effects and you don't really know if you're getting a life or not, like it doesn't actually tell you that you got a life, right? So it would be nice if there's a way of just spelling it out for the players. It's like, you got a life, right? Like this is, this you know, the typical one up, right? Uh, to show some text on the screen. And yeah, we're gonna do that. I think it's it's, it's useful uh, to have this because it don't, not only allows us to do the one up here, but also maybe we can, when later on, when we there's gonna be a score or something, then we can also make some flashing score pop-ups. That's really nice, I think. Um, so yeah, let's, let's do another array. And we're gonna call this floater. Or, or let's call this float, floats. We're gonna have a float. Um, and we're gonna put it in in uh, in tools. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in tools. We're gonna say function uh, pop float, and it's gonna be flx fly. We're gonna have two coordinates, and we're gonna now this time it's just gonna be a single object. So we're gonna be uh, as like a normal object. So we're gonna go local uh, float equals, uh, there's gonna be not nothing involved to, uh, or should I maybe, I mean, why not? Why not? I'm thinking of whether this should be a sprite object that we, that we just created, or if it should, there's no collision with this. So no, no, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, just do a normal float, um, um, or, or let, let's, go, let's call this FL. Uh, and it's gonna have an X coordinate, it's gonna be uh, uh, FLX <laughs> and it's going to be a, a Y coordinate, it's going to be FLY. Um, and um, very important FLT or FLTXT, and um, because each floater, um, it's going to be some text that's just going up a little bit. Um, I want to also add that as well. So um, there's going to be a TXT. And that's gonna have the, uh, the argument FLTXT. Um, and then also another thing I want to have is age. 
and I'm going to set it to zero. And then we're going to add this to our floats. Uh, add floats fl. This is this is um, a thing that we have here. And so the way we're going to use this is here when we're going to get a, get a life, we're going to go pop float. Uh, we're going to pick the center of the pickup. Something like this. Uh, and the float will say one up exclamation point. Um, so it will, you know, the number will go up and be like, oh, one up, you know. So now we have to draw it and we have to animate this. Um, we're going to draw it actually on top of everything. Even, uh, we're not going to draw it on top of, <laughs> yeah, no, it's kind of UI. We have to draw it on top of everything. Floats. Uh, so we're going to go for um, my, my FL in all floats do. And it's going to be really easy. We're just going to print the text from the float. Uh, uh, text. Uh, and we're going to just draw it on the position indicated for the float. It's fine. It's, it's just nothing to it. Um, there's going to be something to it about the color. Um, we're going to make them white for now. And we're going to think about exactly... Um, they, it's going to be flashing involved. Uh, you already know that <laughs> where this is going. And the update function, I want to update the floats. Maybe we should have done this like in a, in a, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this like in with the particles. I'm going to actually update the floats um, here when we're actually drawing the floats. Um, yeah, I think this is actually good because, um, yeah, we, we use this thing where in those modes where um, we show the next wave or the game over screen, right? We are actually using the draw function. Um, and if the draw function has any kind of animation happening, like with the particles, the, the animation will be still ongoing. It won't just freeze uh, if we don't call the update function. And uh, that's kind of that can be nice. That can be actually something that, that you actually want. You want maybe the floater to continue floating even when you went game over for some reason uh, as you picked up something, right? Um, so yeah, I'm maybe, I actually want to maybe animate the floater here, and it's going to be really easy. It's going to be there's not going to be too much to it. It's just going to be uh, the y is going to be, you know, minus 0 0.5. It will just slowly go up. And then we're going to add one to the age. We're going to measure the age of the floater. And I'm going to say if my fl dot age, if the age is greater than 60 frames, then, and then we're going to delete the floater from the floats. I know I'm going fast, but we did it so many times before. Just create an array with an object and then animate it somehow. In this case, moving it up, counting up the age. And if the age gets, gets too big, we delete it. But otherwise, it's just a text being printed on the screen. So let's see if how it looks like when we get the one up. No, there we go. Okay, no, that wasn't enough. That was just a normal. Oh, there we go. You saw you saw they went up. Yeah, that's that's it. Let's try it again. Um, let us print a float every time we kill an enemy. Just I just want to see what what it looks like. I don't want to wait for my life to be over. I want to know what 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 it can be right now. Um, so, oh no. We're gonna call this pop float. Pop float. Uh, we're gonna see what ha what it happens with if, if we get hundred points for killing each enemy. Uh, something something dropped somewhere. Um, right, something like this. Okay. So you see this text is going up, but it's not centered at the enemy. It's time. I think it's time to write a function. It has been suggested by, um, I think the earliest person that suggested was Alan Rass. I actually posted me some code in the, in the comments section. That's really nice. We should make a, a, a function that centers text. I think it's time. 
So we're gonna write a function that will print some text, but instead of being uh, left justified, instead of um, specifying the beginning of the text and then printing from there on, we're gonna specify the center of the text and de depending on, on how big the text it, it will be always centered, right? So um, we're gonna go function C print. Uh, we're gonna uh, receive text. We're gonna receive x, y, and color. Uh, it's gonna be something that is called a wrapper, which is basically we're gonna pass on all those values um, to the print function. We're just gonna do like a wrapper for the print function. But now we're gonna change something. So the, um, the only thing that we're gonna really change is the x position. We want to move the text a little bit to the left. Uh, so it's going to be the, the position of uh, some, the x minus something, right? And the minus is going to be uh, the length of the text. We actually haven't done that yet. We use the hashtag to uh, get the length of an array. That's something that we did. When you have an array, you can do a hashtag and then you get how many elements an array has. But you can also use the hashtag um, to, in conjecture with a, uh, with a string. And that gives you the amount of characters in a in a string. So you can count the characters in a string. That that's what we want because we want to know how how wide the text is. So the text is a number of characters in in the text multiplied by four. That's how wide the text is. But we don't want to move the text you know that much to to the side. We just want to move it halfway that much. So instead of multiplying it by four, we multiply it by two. And that should, in theory, center the text. Let's try that with our float instead of the... No, actually, let's try that with, with a draw function. We, we had that problem at the beginning. Remember when we want to center my awesome shmup? We can try this now. We're gonna go C print my awesome shmup, and we're gonna specify 64, the center of the screen, as the position of this this text and it should be centered on a screen. Let's try that. It looks centered. It looks centered. Oh. And so I can actually replace all of this with the, with this new function now. It's it's kind of nice. <laughs> we should have done this so much. It's some of the things you you just like ah, I'm going to do it later and it's like uh so all of this stuff can be now be re replaced with with C print. Even the wave function I uh, just want to make sure that because all of this is supposed to be centered, so we just want to make sure that we use 64 as the x coordinate. So it's really centered on the screen because 64 is the center of the screen again. Okay. <laughs> Everything is C print now. It's so funny. Uh, just going through it all again. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good. Let's try that. Oh, it looks so nice. Oh, it's so nice centered. Oh. And now, oh, we uh, actually we're not using the C print in the floats, so we're gonna use it in the floats now. Um, uh, that when we draw the the floats, there, print. Instead, we're gonna go C print. It's a uh, really nice because it's uh, like a one-to-one -one replacement. You can just and there we go. Oh yeah, that's that's nice. That's nice. Okay, so and you can see the one up here. The C that looks good. Almost. There's one thing I want to fix. Um, I want to flash again. I think flashing is very important for these kind of floaters, and we're just gonna hard code it. And we already did that. It's the same thing as with outline. We're just going to use a modulo. So we're going to go local um, my call equals seven. It usually it's white, but if um, t modulo four is smaller than two, then the same code here. Uh, then my call is going to set to red, red and white. Very very intense flashing. Let's see if that works. And then we're going to plug this helper variable my call into the color of the text that is being printed. And that should alternate between seven and eight. And this, this little code tells us, you know, how quickly it flashes. Yeah, okay. This is an intense flashing. This is an intense flashing, but that's fine because uh, it should indicate things that are intense. 
Like this is this is very arcadey. This feels very arcadey. I think I think this is okay. I think it's okay. Let's try a softer flashing, the 14 instead of the 8. So again, pink, uh, pink and white. That's okay. That's less intense, but I like the I like the intensity of the of the red. I think I'm gonna keep this around. And if it's too intense, people are gonna complain, and we can always make this go away. Um, right. So we don't want the pop float on every enemy kill. I think that's too much. We're gonna do and pop. Um, we're gonna pop the float. Actually, when we um, when we kill them. When when we kill them during an a, an attack mission, so let's let's actually do that. Let's let's not delete it. Uh, what is happening? Okay, there. We want to take this pop float, and we're gonna uh, put it here when we know that we intercepted the enemy during an attack, and then we're gonna actually do like a special like oh you got some additional points. Uh, we're gonna just want to make sure that the hundred is gonna be. See now, now you can actually see that. Oh, okay, I got him. Um, because it's gonna be some extra points for for getting. <laughs> what was that? Oh, I got a lot of cherries. Is that was that the? Uh, it looks so much more like an arcade game now, especially with the with our sound effects. Oh, this is completely changed the nature of the game. Oh, we're almost about to get the one up on the second level already. Maybe a bit um, the spawns are maybe a bit too generous. Well, technically, the first one up was kind of like. We started with some cherries already, so that, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. Right, but um, as I said, there is a thing that we actually wanted to do, and that is gonna be, um, yeah, we wanted to have the cherry bomb, like the, the bomb, like the cherry bomb. You see, you can actually use a, a really nice analogy. This is a cherry bomb. It makes sense, cherries, obviously. Um, could be another fruit, too. It's fine, it's fine. But cherry bomb is pretty good. Um, right, so let us go and yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so an update function where we uh, press the buttons. Here's where we press the normal shoot button and then we shoot. Uh, now I want to create a different type of shot or um, I want to create the bomb effect. And the bomb effect is... <sighs> uh, this is, I think, something that we could go down a rabbit hole about. Um, I think it's it's possible to be like, okay, we're just gonna create like this crazy thing and it's gonna be amazing. And, and you know, it's gonna be, the entire screen will be shaking maybe and, and particle effects and everything. But at this point, I really, I just wanna get something and I want to um, use as much the already existing code. I wanna build up on, on top of existing code rather than beginning something new, right? It's supposed to be a basic shmup, right? And we are already kind of like way past the, the mark that we, we're aiming at. So something I would maybe do here is do a spread shot. That's something that actually people might want to do in in uh, in their shmup anyway. So let's just do a spread shot of the player. So the idea is that if you hit the button four and uh, if share is uh, greater than zero, then else. Then we do a cherry bomb, cherry bomb or a share bomb, <laughs> uh, share, and then share equals zero. Uh, if share is zero, then we're gonna we have to do like a map sound effect that to indicate that. No, not 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 the not the shark. Not the shark. Uh, soft. Nope. Okay, this sounds good. Third, sound effect 32. <sighs> Not, don't want to spend too much time in, in the sound effect uh, department. Uh, this is important, by the way. Um, whenever you have some ability that would usually work, but it doesn't work now for some reason, you still want to communicate to the player that this is possible elsewhere, for example, in Super Mario, 
when you are the small Mario, ducking doesn't actually do anything. So you don't have to show Mario ducking because you don't actually get smaller. If you're a big Mario, then ducking actually changes the size of your character and that actually gameplay relevant. But they still animate Mario ducking if it's if the, if he's small, even though it doesn't actually change anything about the gameplay, just to show players to communicate to players that yes, th this is a ducking. This this that's what the button pressing down does. It, it makes Mario duck. Uh, and even though the Mario is small, it doesn't do anything. Later on, maybe Mario gets bigger, and then players will know that ah, pressing down will make make Mario duck. Uh, in this case, it would be nice if it was a little bit clearer that the cherries are involved, but I just want to at least the game react somehow when you press the other button so the player knows, oh, this button does something, I just haven't figured out what. <laughs> Weird map sound effect, right? All right, so we're going to do the share bomb now, uh, and we're going to put it in bullets. I want to put it here because we already here we already have some uh, 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 spread shots. Uh, except these are enemy spread shots, and we're going to have to do our own spread shots about this. Right, so we're going to actually create a lot of bullets in um, uh, player bullets this time around. And so let's add them here. This is going to be how we create a bullet. And we're going to put them in the loop for i equals um oh for i equals yeah equals one to share do so we're gonna uh, spawn as many bullets as there are cherries mm, we might actually spawn as many bullets as there are cherries times two i think that might even makes more sense um because like, like if you if you think about this so if you have just one cherry and then you press the button, then just one shot comes out. That's nothing. Like you want to have at least two shots coming out, right? It's, it's, it's not a, like one shot is not a spread shot. It's just like you already have a button to shoot a bullet. You want to have something more substantial. Uh, here, this um, sprite. Um, I'm just going to be a, this different. This this big, big bullet now. Uh, maybe, maybe that will actually make a difference. So it's going to be uh, 17. Uh, and then call with, uh, and call, uh, we're going to delete that because we already know uh, that the defaults are 8 times 8, and this is going to be this bullet, 8 times 8. Um, we already had we only changed the call with because we had the slimmer bullet at some point, remember? So we can remove it now. Uh, now the speed uh, uh, is something that, that is going to be some, uh, something that we have to figure out, uh, but the position, um, I think when the bullet is bigger, then we can put it here uh oh yeah and also we have to we have to i guess we have to do the muzzle right it's it is definitely muzzle yeah we're gonna do a muzzle at the end right so now we create a bunch of bullets but now we have to figure out where the bullets are going and for this i want to look at the spread function the uh, the spread shot function for the enemies so you see we're also looping through this um through this and but then we have we have this this complicated thing. We have a base that we don't probably not going to need this, but we have like um, we have this. We div divide one through the number of bullets, and then we multiply it by i. So we kind of have like a spacing between the bullets that we calculated. Let's calculate the spacing. This time we're going to use a helper variable because this might be a bit tricky. Local spacing. Let's call it just SPC spacing. Um, now, with the enemy spread shot, we had one divided by the number of bullets. Share times two is the number of bullets. I will multiply, I will put it in parentheses just because I'm paranoid about the order of operations problems. Um, so we will multiply share by two, by two and divide one. And that will would get us the spacing if this was a circle spread shot. It's not. But let's just assume it's one. Let's just make one work, and then we're gonna try to narrow it down to a cone instead of of the entire thing, right? And then we're gonna go new bull. Oh, right here. Um, this is where we are actually uh, ch changing the speed. And uh, look at this. We it's it's all it's all here, right? We can just copy and paste it. So we're gonna use this formula that we use for uh, the bullets, where we can specify an angle, right? Uh, and then we have to calculate the angle as well, right? Right, so we have to do local ang equals 
uh, SPC times I, the spacing that we calculated times the number of the bullet that we're drawing. And then here in um, my bowl, yeah, no, it's, it's e bull. It has to be new bull. New bull. New bull. Sx equals ang times the speed. We haven't specified what the speed is, but usually the player bullets are flying with a speed of a four. They're faster. So let's multiply by four. Um, yeah. I think this will work. Let's try this. It won't work. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is zero. Okay, that's that's it. I thought it would be. Oh, okay, baby, that's good. I think the the beep is a little bit too too long. Right, I noticed something. Um, we uh, the tr triggering of the of the uh, bomb should be on a button P, not a button. Uh, and we talked about this, that was uh, one of the early episodes, right? So the BTN function returns true on every frame in which a button is pressed. The BTN P waits for a release. Although if you keep it pressed for a long time, it starts re-triggering. Uh, but in this case, I think it's good. Oh, this is good. Um, right. Oh, as you can see, let me pick up a cherry. I want to see what a cherry looks like. See, now it shoots uh, one bullet to the front and one to the back. That's okay, but it's, it's not that great. Uh, right, but uh, again, we want to uh, narrow it down. We want to narrow down the, uh, the range. Um, so, let us let us draw this a little bit. Okay, so again we are back in in, in paint real quick. Not not too long here. Just want to draw the circle and kind of like I want to do some planning on what this is going to look like, right? Um, so if we have a circle like this, um, that's a full circle. That's one, right? But m what I want to maybe do is oh man, what why uh, why is that always? Uh, I should just turn this off. Um, but what I want to do is I want the bullets maybe to come out in a range that is kind of maybe something like this, like 45 degrees in this direction, right? Um, oh, I, ah, paint. Why are you pain? Why are you creating so much pain to, um, to me right now? So, yeah. <laughs> So, all right, so let us remember what the coordinates for Pico 8 were. That was zero for here, 0 0.5 for here, um, uh, 0 0.25 uh, here, and 0 0.75 here, right? And this here, this position that was kind of like 0 0.1 uh, no, 0 0.375. That was 375. So it will go through um, to 375 and until 0 0.625, I think. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds right. Or 625. So this is, nobody can read this. Nobody can read this, Christian. What are you even doing? 0 0.375. So these are the two numbers between um, which we want the bullets to fly. And the overall angle that we have between the two here, that is actually, you know, just a, just a 90 degrees angle. And we can see like from zero to, to here, that's 0 0.25. So that's the actual angle of the spread, 0 0.25, right? So we want an angle of 0 0.2, a total angle of 0 0.25, and we want to begin at 0 0.375. I'm going to actually write this down. Zero. And sure, like these are a lot of comma values, but that's fine. We just can plug them in and see what happens. All right, so instead of the one, we have to do things. So instead of the, the one is no longer the one, uh, the total spread is going to be, going to be 0 0.25. 
that's the total um, the total spread that we're going. That's the spacing between the bullets in order to to cover like just a tiny cone instead of like the entire circle. And then here, where we are calculating the angle, we are going to go zero point three seven five plus that spacing is what I'm thinking. Might not be correct. Let's let's try this out. I mean, it looked amazing. Ah, see, yes, you can see that it's not quite correct. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm disappointed. So now if we have one cherry. See, it's it's not symmetrical. Yeah, it's not symmetrical. Um, let's go, let's just go start at zero. We're gonna have one more bullet. So it's gonna be three bullets if you have one cherry. <laughs> that looks so, so good. Yeah, okay, three bullets. Uh, if you have two, uh, one cherry, it has three, three bullets. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Then now, now it looks, looks correct. Yeah, this is this is good. This is this works for me. Uh, maybe another thing that we want to do here is I'm, I'm gonna actually do a big shave. <laughs> big shave. Oh yeah, no, we have to actually do the shave at where the player is. Mm -hmm. Ship X. Just to add to the awesomeness. Uh, let's put it at the end. Oh, oh, the shave wasn't actually centered at the ship. So let's add plus three to the coordinates. It's, it's crazy how you can you can you can see that, right? It's we're very sensitive at this, these kinds of things. But that's good. I think the the bomb doesn't feel uh, substantial. Let us just add some shake. Uh, let's like this. So that's good. But the thing is, the it doesn't feel substantial in a gameplay kind of fashion. Like I shot like a huge bomb at uh, the enemies and it just let remove like one layer of enemies so let us do a new new ability of the bullets a new property of the bullets that is called dmg damage and we're going to set it to three and the regular bullet that is we have in the normal update function here It's here in the second tab. We're going to set damage to one. And then if the enemy gets hit in the update function, we, instead of just, you know, making, uh, instead of them losing just one point, one health point, it's going to lose as much as is indicated by damage. Uh, where is the collision between enemy and bullets? There we go. Here we lose one health point. Instead of losing one health point, we're going to lose uh my bull dot damage amount of health points so it will should feel the same when we when we shoot but now we're going to use the bullet <laughs> okay yeah that's good that's good i'm fine with that that was fine that's that's fine that's good what, what what's what's good <laughs> Uh, maybe we also add a sound effect. I know we. Have, I, I know my luck with sound effects today is not great, but maybe we can we can figure something out. Okay, okay. Maybe maybe if we dampen things. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let's experiment more. Um, let's let's add some uh, some vibrato or slide. Let's do slide. That sounds like a like a klaxon, right? <laughs> that, that's actually fun. Meow. That would be good for a for an enemy. I might 
take my space bar from... Oh, that's actually fun. Oh, that's good. Maybe if we add the new effects to this, maybe that will actually sound nice. Nah, that's not good. Let's do... Yeah, maybe this that sounds like fire. Yeah, let's try that. Uh, what about the volume levels? No, I haven't dealt with the volume levels. Oh, we actually aren't playing the sound effect. Um, SFX 33, that was the sound effect, right? <laughs> yeah, that's good. That sounds good. Yes! Oh man, that feels so good! Oh, 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 guys, 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 okay. Mm. So this is, uh, I'm from the slight future. <laughs> I've been actually playtesting this a little bit and I noticed there's something missing and so, it's so addictive. But there's one thing missing that I that we haven't implemented and I wanted to do add, add this real quick. Um, when we do the cherry bomb, uh, we should get an invulnerability window. Uh, so we're gonna go invul equals uh, how much? A second? We're gonna try a second and then we're gonna tweak this, you know, we're gonna have to play test and tweak this as we go. I think that's okay. Um, the idea is that, you know, the bomb is something that also sometimes gets you out of a crazy difficult situation. So yeah, this will, um, you can like phase two enemies, for example, you can go like this and then you can, you don't get hit by an enemy. That's kind of like this idea of the cherry bomb or generally bombs in, in, in shmups. So yeah, I just added this. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we are ready. I think we're ready. I think we're finished with this episode and we are ready to tackle the big boss. But first, we are going to go to the small boss. We're going to go to the doggy zone. All right, so I think this time around I have three spicy tasks for you guys. So uh, the first task is we went now through like two episodes of us creating power up and then creating uh, special effects or like a gameplay attached to that power up. I think we, we got it to some a, a good spot. But what if there's another power up, right? <laughs> so one challenge or one idea would be what if there's maybe two different fruit or maybe, um, you know, maybe you are, are not using fruit. Maybe you had like a like an energy container or something. Um, I want you to just, just try to go through this process again with a different uh, power up and then maybe come up with something, some kind of gameplay that is attached to that other power up. Um, the second task that uh, I would suggest is uh, right now we have the bomb and it's good. We used so much of the systems, uh, at least some easily accessible systems that were available to us, but we can do so much more. Can you come up with some ideas to make this bomb effect even more impressive? What are some ideas that you have to make this even more, add more punch? I want to see those gifs of the screen being like really torn apart. Maybe we can use the particle systems that we have for the bombs. Maybe we can, uh, for the explosions, maybe we can add them, those somehow in there. Maybe the uh, the uh, bullets are leaving behind trails, come up with something nice. I think there is there is a lot of potential here. We can use some of the techniques that we already use, but we have to uh, customize them a little bit. Go wild. And then finally, last task is we are about, next episode is gonna be about the boss. So I want you to create an impressive boss. <laughs> I want you to create an impressive sprite that shows an amazing, huge boss. Uh, enemy and it, it's going to be enormous um, to create something like, I don't know, I think my boss is going to be something like this, like uh, four sprites across and three sprites in height. So this is going to be my boss. This is going to be the size of my boss. Four sprites across, three um, in height. 
So in total of 32 pixels width and 24 pixels height. This is going to be my boss size. You can do an even, even huger boss, but I think this is a good size to begin with. Fill this with something that looks amazing. And so at the end of the episode, I always want to give a big shout out and thank you to all of the people who made this show possible. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazydevs. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Okay, so it's coming. I can I can already hear. Do you hear it? You know, the, uh, the, the water in my glass is vibrating. I can already hear him approaching. There is no refuge. The big boss is approaching the finale. On the next episode, we're gonna, it's going to be a jumbo episode where we're just going to do the boss fight. And it's going to be the boss fight of this tutorial as well. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.